Good morning. Welcome to my kitchen here today. I'm Jennifer. This is The Country Life and I'm just so happy to have you here. It's December. There's always somebody that you probably want to give a little gift to and I know it's very common practice to do cookies. Um, but you know what? Sometimes you want something quicker and so I want you guys to just think about quick breads. They're very, very simple to make. You can make a whole lot of them at one time and honestly, it's definitely faster than a whole bunch of cookies. I mean, one batch of cookies isn't bad, but if you want a tray with a nice display, it, um, it takes a while to get all those done. So Maria is in the kitchen with me. Where is she? She's putting on her apron and we are going to make cranberry nut breads. So I don't know the last time I showed cranberry nut bread on my channel. Let me just show you what we have going so far. We are going to triple the batch and that is going to make somewhere, it would make three large loaves. We are actually going to use these small little ceramic ones I have because these are going to be teacher gifts for the kids homeschool co-op and I actually need nine of them <laughs> and I have eight of these so we'll figure something out. But a triple batch is going to be more than enough for these because I usually can get about three or four of these out of one regular um, batch of cranberry nut bread. So I have some other bread pans. I can do that too. We're, we're just going to fill them all up. That's the goal is to fill them all up. So three batches and I have my oranges here. I, at first I made a mistake. I was thinking I was slicing oranges for us to eat and then all of a sudden I was like, no, I'm not doing that. So what I do is I just zest it. So I have this little zester and you just, let's see if I can do this with one hand. You just pull it along well, I can't really one-handed, but you just pull it along and that all zests into my bowl. So that's the zest of three oranges. I'm going to get these oranges cut in half now and I'm just going to juice them in here and then we will measure out six times three. So we'll measure out 18 ounces total between the juice and added water. So definitely don't accidentally cut the ends off your oranges because it really makes it a trick to juice. It's juicing all over the place and not exactly where I want it to go. As long as there's no seeds in the little bit of pulp that um, collects on top, I pour that right in too. That adds super, super flavor. <laughs> Pour it into here, see what we have. So I juiced about a half a cup, so I'm just going to add, so that's four ounces, and I said I needed, what, six times three is 18, so I need 14 ounces of water on top of this four ounces of juice. Such a grinding and grinding. You can sit if you want. It might be easier. And we're going to need a total of three cups. So just keep grinding and grinding and grinding, okay? At this point, I need to get out my cookbook just to be sure that I have the recipe memorized. Just to be sure. Let's see, where is it? Okay, cranberry bread, page 38. I need to put in three eggs. How can you grind so fast? You can grind No, I can't grind that fast. I would say about like that. You just, just gotta hold it. And now, since I'm uh, tripling the recipe, I need six tablespoons of oil, which I should have looked at my conversion. Could have done one measurement, but I feel like that would have been about three eighths of a cup. Does Joe's class have gin? Now I lost track. How many did I put in? Shoot. Did I put in six? You know what we need to do? 
Well, it's a good thing I have instant replay because I just checked and I needed one more tablespoon. <laughs> so fill up that plus a half. Just plus half a cup, just a little bit more. Yeah. And when this would have a nice heat, that would be enough. And at this point, I'm going to get my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Okay, at this point now I want to put in three cups of sugar. Come over and measure in some things. Yeah. So you'll need the one and a half teaspoon. Oh, yep, you want the one that's one and a half teaspoon. One of the bags of sugar that I bought recently had some very hard chunks in it, and it's kind of been a pain to deal with. I'm hoping that putting that in here kind of helps to get it dissolved a little bit. Let's see if I can find, there's a chunk right there. Nope, that's just half a teaspoon. There we go. I don't think there's one on Joe's new one. I think you'll have to look in the... Yeah, there's not. Yeah. Um, so you need a one and a half teaspoon. So is it two? So you're going to measure out three of those. Three of those of the baking powder. But don't put it in yet, okay? In order to save on that step of sifting together flour and baking powder, baking soda, and salt, instead of sifting it together, what I like to do is have everything else mixed the way I do, and then I like to sprinkle over the flour. So for flour, we're tripling, so we need two, four, six. You count. Okay, one, two, Beautiful. Now what I like to do is sprinkle the other um, leavening agents and salt over top of this. So let's just double check. One and a half teaspoons of baking powder times three. Okay, so you're going to do that three times. Let's see. And then we need a half a teaspoon of baking soda, so times three would be one and a half. So we only need one of those of baking soda, right here. Dig it all the way in. There you go. And now try to sprinkle that one if you can. And then same thing for salt. We need a half a teaspoon salt, but we're timesing it by three, so that means we need one and a half teaspoons of salt. So the same thing for the salt. Oh, our light just flickered. Sprinkle it all around. And now I kind of just light, just wait. I want to just lightly fluff it here, just so we don't get a big clump wet. You know, you don't want to get a big clump of the baking powder wet, otherwise it'll kind of stick together. Okay, now you can just fold it. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Folding. I'll put these other ingredients away. This is all we're baking today, so rather than leave everything out, I might as well pick up as I go about. <laughs> You're not baking supper? Well, we'll make supper, but I, I won't need sugar and baking powder and baking soda and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, so we need three cups of of nuts. I don't have quite three cups here, but that's okay. We'll start getting that stirred you in. Have one and a quarter cups. No, I had two and a half cups. And if you noticed, Maria, I had Maria um, stop mixing it before it was all the way mixed because you don't want to over mix your quick breads. Sometimes that can make them to have domes on top rather than a nice rounded top. 
and I knew we would be doing more mixing with the nuts. And once we put the cranberries in, we'll have to mix one more time. And as far as the cranberries, it calls for a cup, which means I would need three cups. But I just have, I usually do a nice big heaping cup. And beware, once a cranberry gets, like gets loose, it just rolls. <laughs> rolls and rolls and rolls. There's no need to chop your cranberries either. They kind of, they will cook and they'll get soft. And then as, once you slice your bread, you will naturally chop the cranberries when it's a whole lot easier to chop than when they are frozen, unless you want to use a food processor. Then go ahead and chop them right away. So if you're using cran frozen cranberries, it makes the dough very, very stiff. But that's okay. It actually makes it pretty easy to put into the um, into the little loaf pans without dripping it everywhere. Oh, hi, Joe. Joe, do you want to play this game? No. Come on. Come on. No. You should play with Maria. No, I can't. She'll teach you how. No. Yeah. Yes, you can. No. All right, in they go. We'll come back in about 45 minutes. So if I was making great, the big nine by five loaf pans, I would put those in for, I'm gonna set it actually for 40 for those smaller ones. I would set it for about an hour and then I'd most likely have to do it another 10 minutes. So the big loaf pans, an hour and 10 minutes to get that center really well done so that as it cools, it doesn't sink. Um, so the small ones, like I said, 40 minutes we're gonna go with and maybe we'll have to go a little longer, but we'll see. Okay, I got so excited to get these out of the pan that I forgot to wait. I'm still happy that this one came out well. Sometimes if a cranberry gets on the edge, it pops open and then it makes just a little bit of a darker spot, almost, almost a little burnt spot. That sugar gets really, really, really dark. Um, you can't really help that though. That's just how it is. Sometimes it gets like that. But the best is to wait about 10 minutes for these to cool and then I will pop them out of the loaf pans. We'll let them cool. We only can let them cool for about 55 minutes and then we have to get these uh, packaged up because we have to get out the door. I'm the champion. Gone is the loser because I am the champion. 